तो नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री वी डिड लेक्चर्स अप टू लेक्चर नाइन एंड वी वर आल्सो डूइंग द इंटरस्पर्स्ड प्रैक्टिस सेशंस ऑफ एक्सरसाइज वन वी आर ऑन एक्सरसाइज वन सो फार which is observing the self by the self and we were doing step 5 so in step 1 we observed the imagination the way it is the feelings the thoughts the expectation in the imagination particularly the feeling because that is of maximum consequence for us and we were trying to observe it without trying to change it or stop it or um evaluate it or anything just observing as it is in step 2 we asked if this feeling that i am having at any moment whether it is naturally acceptable to me or not whether i want to continue with this feeling or i want to come out of this feeling and in step 3 we asked whether with this feeling that i have at any moment i am comfortable or i am uncomfortable and we found that whenever i have a feeling that is naturally acceptable to me then i am comfortable with it whenever i have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable to me i feel uncomfortable with it so this feeling that i have at any moment this is what is responsible for my happiness or unhappiness at any moment so then in step 4 we came to the crucial question who is deciding this feeling that i am having at any moment that is deciding my happiness and unhappiness and we concluded that it is i who is deciding the feeling it is not another human being it is not the situation outside but it is i who is deciding the feeling this is leading to my happiness or unhappiness in other words i am the one who is responsible i am 100% responsible for my happiness or unhappiness not the person outside not the situation outside then in step 5 we were saying that now that we can see that i am the one who is deciding the feeling at any moment what is the basis on which i am deciding my feeling is it right understanding or is it some assumption in the absence of right understand so we were asking what is the basis for my decision for deciding the feeling that i am deciding and we said that there are two possibilities it is either right understanding or some assumption in the absence of right understanding so when i decide my feeling or thought on the basis of right understanding i find i am i decide in favor of a feeling that is naturally acceptable to me and i am comfortable in harmony in a state of happiness but when i decide my feeling on the basis of some assumption some say preconditioning then it is not clear which what kind of feeling i will choose to have a feeling that is naturally acceptable or a feeling that is otherwise it will depend on my preconditioning so my state will be indefinite if i choose to have a feeling that is naturally acceptable i will be comfortable if i choose to have a feeling not naturally acceptable i will be uncomfortable but this feeling i am deciding on the basis of my preconditioning so whether i will be in harmony or in contradiction whether i will be happy or unhappy that is not clear therefore we said that it is important we can see that we have a need for right understanding 
we have a need for deciding the feeling on the basis of right understanding regardless of what is happening outside whether things outside are fine not fine either way we took the example also let us take an example supposing i have the right understanding about human human relationship that means if i have understood the human being if i have understood myself as a human being i have understood the other person also as a human being then i will have a feeling of relationship for everyone because i can see the similarities in the self for every human being now this feeling is naturally acceptable to me and with this feeling i am in harmony i am in happiness so when i decide my feeling and thought on the basis of this on the basis of right understanding of the human being i am able to decide in favor of a feeling that is naturally acceptable to me so i am comfortable i am in harmony i am in a state of happiness but if on the other hand i do not have right understanding about human human relationship so now you can refer to the lower left block in this situation what happens if i have not understood the human being i have not understood myself as a human being i have not understood the other person as a human being then i will have some assumption about the human being about myself about the other and every other human being and my feeling will depend upon my assumption suppose i assume that the human being has to be evaluated on the basis of a particular class then i may have a feeling of relationship for somebody belonging to a particular class and i will feel happy with that but any time you know i am in the company of a feeling of uh, uh, in the company of somebody from another class then i may have a feeling of opposition because i don't see my relationship with this person so you will see that there are many times like this that we keep harboring feeling of relationship for one person feeling of opposition opposition for another type of person and i am not able to see that all human beings you know i am related to each and every human being so therefore when i am deciding on the basis of any assumption any precondition it's not definite i may choose to have a feeling that is naturally acceptable or i may choose to have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable so whether i am going to be comfortable uncomfortable in harmony or not whether i am going to be happy or not that is not very definite so therefore we said that this need is there for right understanding now if i am able to do this if i am able to have the right understanding then i can have a feeling that is naturally acceptable all the time every moment regardless of what is happening outside regardless of who i am interacting with so that means what that i can be happy at every moment it is up to me and because i am not just interacting with other human beings i am also you know related to this whole nature the existence so i need to understand all of this the nature the existence and i have to decide what feelings are naturally acceptable to me in relation to all of this human beings as well as the rest of nature and that is why um, we are studying this in the uhv3 course our focus is on that and once we have this right understanding the right, the upper right block then 
we will find that we have the feeling of relationship you know when we awaken to the activity of contemplation we are able to see the relationship we are able to see our relatedness with other units so we have a feeling of relationship when we awaken to the activity of understanding we are able to understand the harmony that is there in nature and we are able to have the feeling of harmony within us and when we realize the coexistence when we are able to see these units submerged in space we are able to see the coexistence then we have a feeling of coexistence in us so we find that what is naturally acceptable to us are the feelings of relationship the feelings of harmony and the feeling of coexistence so this is what we said that we are going to check in every interaction with others check your feeling and ask yourself what was the basis on which you were deciding your feeling was it right understanding or some assumption in the absence of right understanding so um if any of you have any observations you can bring them up and we can discuss uh, good morning didi good morning everyone uh, mm -hmm. didi when i keep checking uh, for myself i can uh, see that anything which is not uh, uh giving mutual happiness uh, i get disturbed somewhere or other like it mm -hmm. uh, it's not a good feeling but mm -hmm. uh, when i see uh, around me in the society people some um, uh, political leaders and all who are holding like who are uh, deciding the uh, future of the country or even the present of the country some of them i can see that for many many years they are in the being in lies dishonesty even violence murder uh, all these things how uh, like of course it's for others we are not supposed to talk about i know but since these people decide our lives also in a way uh, Uh, because uh, our lives means our uh, what uh, in whichever physical <coughs> uh, world we live in they decide many factors so uh, don't they feel for so many years don't they have any moral compunction any disturbance inside i keep wondering uh, what may have happened because so many years they are in, involved in such things and uh, what what is it do they accept it that Uh, like they, that is only giving them happiness it's just i don't know and i keep thinking about it yeah didi <clears throat> so actually if you see you know a lot of work has been done with jail people people who are you know convicts who are jailed and who have done some very heinous crimes they have done murders and such things one thing that you find in each of these people they don't want to do what they have been doing they feel not good about what they have done in life no yes yes they do whatever it takes to try to keep their families away from this kind of thing they don't want their children to ever know what they are doing or to have anything to do with what all they are doing so if they were happy doing this they would involve everybody else also in that but why do they not so if you look at it they don't want to but somewhere they can't get out of this compulsion see there may there may have been many different circumstances i mean if we see we are all very fortunate we have had backgrounds where you know we have a we've grown up in a 
in a comfortable environment in an environment where there is love there is you know there are people who cherish the relationship and so with that love and affection we have grown up but everybody may not be as fortunate there may be people who come from broken homes they have seen a lot of conflict they have seen a lot of you know arguments fights unhappiness and many a times they are not able to understand why as a child where oh. the parents are fighting very often the child thinks he or she is responsible for this fight they don't realize that you know this is lack of understanding in the parents but they are kind of um, affected by all this naturally now if i am seeing such an you know if i am in an environment day in and day out which is like this where there is no love no affection i might not be able to think straight and nobody you know in our relig- in our education or in our systems or anywhere do we talk about something like natural acceptance so you don't refer to anything inside you are just taking things from your environment and making some assumption about it isn't it yes yes it is yeah so you know we can't say that they it doesn't bother them it does bother them but they have perhaps come so far they don't know how to come out of it hmm. even people who are in addictions you find you know those who are taking drugs those who are you know drinking excessively a lot of times they create disturbances socially among others in society they don't want to whenever they are you know they, if they have any sober moment and you are they will tell you that they are not happy with their habits they want to come out of it but they have gone you know they have been doing this for so far and there is no happiness inside they don't see any happiness inside so they feel compelled to go back to trying to derive some some pleasure from outside even if it is temporary but when you know that effect is gone then they feel very disgusted they don't you know, feel good about themselves but it becomes like a vicious cycle they want to come out of it they don't know how to come out of it and they are quite mm-hmm. unhappy oh mm-hmm. so if you know these such people are provided some avenue say you know they are um introduced to their own natural acceptance to so to speak so if they start referring to the natural acceptance you find that they are just like any other human being they are able to see it and they are able to refer to it and with a little help and guidance they are able to many of them are able to come out of this but they need support and you see in society also we don't give them that support we just make that decision victim perpetrator victim needs our sympathy perpetrator you know we have a different feeling for them and so we just put them in the jail and we don't provide them any other you know we we give them food and stuff like that but what are we doing to help in their understanding we don't do anything about <coughs> so they will continue to be this way and in fact when they come out of the jail they learn more tricks and trade you know tricks of how to do more crimes and all of that and they go back to doing that because they don't know any other thing and there is no happiness inside so actually they if you see these people also need our compassion and we need to you know understanding is important for them also just like it is for any other human so with the work that was done in the jail it has been shown that such people they respond very well and in fact 
many of them have come out of you know the earlier ways they have changed completely after getting this even if it is like information they are also able to explore they are also able to refer to their natural acceptance and because they inherently do want to come out of it if you know many of them who have made effort have actually come out of it yeah yes yes if we can uh, even in our this uh, bhagwan bhaiya has been working yes. uh, in nogao jail and kanpur also we have started mm-hmm. yes jail inmates i uh, always had empathy and compassion for them even before you it's because once uh, very long ago i read about uh, this uh, rape counseling like rapist counseling for rapist and uh, that time also i thought about it that 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 was an age like when normally like rapists and all criminals bad that was the stage but still i thought that if somebody has taken effort to counsel or talk to the rapist there must be something like we need to think in that direction also it was there but what now i was talking about that is powerful people very rich people very powerful people and over the years they have been doing all kinds of wrong things and then they are continuing of course now i i see that definitely intention is pure they were not born with those uh, wrong intentions but then so many years they have spent in this and maybe they have they are in that spiral like they they are caught up but they do not realize maybe yeah and constant yeah. pressure they feel to maintain that power and money that pressure itself is disturbing that i can see now yeah for them um, for them yeah yeah now in this you can see and i mean i'm showing this again for everybody in the lower diagram you can see where we have not awakened to the higher activities our source of the desire feeling at any time is from outside from our preconditionings from sensations so this is where they are getting their you know the motivation for their desires people mm. in general who have not awakened now you can see that this desire may or may not be in line with the natural acceptance no so if they have not awakened they are not referring to the natural acceptance they are going by this desire and so they may have this free conditioning that you know i need to have x amount of money and so then i'll be happy so with this assumption they are going now their understanding is lacking for sure but they are going about with their desire without referring to the natural acceptance but now these same people if we you know provide them the right information we you know make them see refer to their natural acceptance you will find that there also is the same possibility as a human being they also have the same potential it's just that oh. their preconditionings have been driving their all their desires so their imagination is going in that direction and therefore their behavior is also like that so actually oh. what what we can see is anybody who doesn't have the right understanding needs our compassion yes yes yeah so it's the same thing really hmm isn't it yes we need Uh, many many years of effort to create new leaders who have this uh, awakening or this uh, like who are less uh, uh, who uh, who have less preconditioning of such things and money power is everything yes uh, mm-hmm. it, it uh, over the years we need to work for it to to bring it in the mainstream yes that is the only way <coughs> yes yeah yeah good morning ji good morning to all of you yes yeah good morning uh yeah yesterday we were um, we were talking about uh, a condition that when we uh, uh when we uh, some 
um, uh, if one of the faculty has prepared a report and uh, that report has not been uh, even seen by the authority and has been um, just rejected in that case my opinion was that in in such a scenario the person may lose the motivation to work further but uh, again um, when i realized that this is a decision taken by an individual on preconditioning that uh, my authority will not going to check my uh, work and uh, he will he or she will just reject my uh, all these doings so uh, uh, in the in um, uh, based on the right understanding we we can request to our authority that just once go through it uh, this was all which i wanted to tell yeah this is what we were discussing yesterday no yeah we, yeah we we harbor a feeling of opposition for the other person we don't go and address the issue also but within us we are uncomfortable unhappy all this time because every time you know we think about it we feel like you know this person didn't do the right thing and so we have this feeling of opposition for the other person we are uncomfortable we are unhappy but we don't go and talk to that person and if we try to go and talk to that person with this feeling of opposition it becomes an argument and nothing comes out of it so you feel helpless and you mm -hmm. feel he is responsible for your unhappiness and you can't do anything about it but as we you know are able to see more and more that i can choose to have the right feeling regardless of what is happening outside then mm -hmm. with that feeling of relationship now if i see i see things in a different light mm -hmm. sometimes i may be able to appreciate his problems also no in his yes. position how much stress he may be having uh, yeah. what are this kind of issues all of that so yes. now yeah. with that concern now when i approach the subject with him i discuss things in a very relaxed manner with the right feeling and many a time mm -hmm. solutions can come out of it yeah certainly yeah true yeah. thank you thank you for now for 10 minutes we will do an observation what we'll do is observe your feeling within you what we'll try to do is we will try to observe our feeling for another person any person in your imagination and try to see how you decided this feeling was it based on right understanding or on some assumption try to reflect on your interaction with this person and during the interaction try to see how was your feeling towards this person so supposing this person you feel misbehaved with you disturbed you irritated you check how were you deciding your feeling at that time was your feeling really based on right understanding or on an assumption in the absence of understanding so shall we try to do this for 10 minutes we'll try to observe within us reflect on any interaction with any person and see how was your feeling particularly for those people who have you know you feel wronged you misbehaved with you irritated you disturbed you whatever try to reflect on how you were deciding that feeling first of all what was your feeling at that time for them and how you were deciding that feeling so we'll do this for 10 minutes then we'll come back to observations okay we have been observing for about 10 minutes now would anybody like to share their observations what were they able to see namaskar madam namaskar to all namaste uh, madam yesterday uh, when i was entering a uh, uh, laboratory uh, some students uh, sat around uh, uh, a technician and uh, 
all uh, uh, stood up uh, except one student so i felt uh, a little bit uh, uh, unhappy uh, yes the feeling of uh, opposition so the step one according to our procedure mm -hmm. so i observed my feeling that is a feeling of opposition so mm -hmm. step two is it naturally acceptable or not yes it is not naturally acceptable what i observed mm -hmm. and i want to continue it mean no i don't want to continue that and uh, step three am i comfortable or not i am not at all comfortable Mm -hmm. right. so step 4 uh, is uh, who is uh, uh, who decides that so i i i decided that is clear mm -hmm. and step 5 uh, the self evaluation uh, basis of decision what is the basis uh, for the decision definitely it is not right understanding because it is based on preconditioning because uh, you have been telling from the beginning uh, so we have had uh, an assumption that uh, student uh, student should always uh, respect uh, student should uh, Uh, stand up whenever we come across like that feeling is there mm -hmm. so uh definitely i feel in continuation to that there is a need for right understanding to have a feeling because if i have had a right uh, understanding definitely i ha i i, I uh, have that uh, right feeling so mm -hmm. i would be happy so mm -hmm. that i have clearly observed very nice madam one more thing i observed mm -hmm. so uh, if we go to the pure self if we were really in it uh, it is no way dependent on external things to be happy true uh, but even then uh, i am connected uh, means what based on samskaras and all i think uh, yes. so uh, madam that uh, i want to get rid of so Out nice. of practice only, na madam. Practice, na yes, yes. Uh, enlightening. I feel, madam. Thank you, madam. Thank you, thank you. Nice observation. So, with this kind of you know observation, we can clearly see where we are lacking and where our focus should be. Ah, yes, madam. Nice, very nice. Thank you. Yes. Good morning, madam. Good morning. Uh, uh, before you actually, if I go to some of their shop or purchase something even poor people purchase goa or some other things i am arguing why i want to reduce the price because <laughs> 10 kg grapes is 100 rupees they may say one then i want to reduce my price to uh, 80 rupees they refuse to do that one after they use the program i myself understand they are also poor people uh, they are uh, waiting in the summer outside and uh, we, so instead of uh, i don't argue that point if you say 100 rupees i can give 100 rupees and purchase this kind of a change uh, happen in my life very nice very nice and see we we also realize when we see we are already prosperous and we can yeah. see that 10 20 rupees will not make that much difference to us anyway so with that we are able to you know see that for the other all it may or may not make that much difference for the other also but at least from our side we can see that we don't need to do this we don't need to become unhappy about this unnecessarily we are already prosperous we have enough very nice yes thank you thank you it's please uh, namaste didi yeah didi uh, uh, what i observed in each and every situation where uh, i was uh, understanding that uh, the other person is having a feeling of opposition uh, uh, towards me uh, clearly this feeling came from inside from me only so it's not the other person or not the external situations which uh, which are making me unhappy rather it's only me who is deciding so no. uh, who who has feeling of opposition you or the other person and earlier i felt that some per other person is having opposition towards me mm -hmm. earlier mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. now i understand that no this feeling which 
came inside me that the other person is having a position feeling uh, towards me that was on preconditioning actually these feeling came inside me upon uh, um, um, came inside me well i mean i am the originator of this feeling uh-huh. that he he or she is in a position to me yes. so i have to work on myself okay. nice yes this is very important see we say it came now when we say it came it looks like somebody else is responsible but i chose i decided yeah this is important to see when you see that then you will take responsibility also that i yeah. need to work for myself so that i can have the right feeling within me and be happy nice yeah. nice thank you thank you mamta ji good morning deeti good, good morning. morning i have a sharing ma'am uh, mm-hmm. that makes my day every day you know mm-hmm. i take a rickshaw uh, mm-hmm. from to my school daily mm-hmm. and uh, uh, when i ask uh, the fare they say 70 um uh, uh, you know we ha- we ladies have a uh, mm-hmm. habit of bargaining i would say 60 mm-hmm. uh, he would agree Mm. And, uh, after reaching the school when i give him 70 rupees he smiles mm-hmm. that smile you know makes my day i feel very very happy and mm-hmm. i do it every day <laughs> i do it every day i bargain and then i give him whatever he asks for but why do you bargain i don't know uh, i have just i i think i want to see that smile i think uh, that But makes him what he wants also the, the smile can be there no no ma that smile is different you know when uh, somebody uh, uh, thinks that he is not going to get what he wants and after that he gets that smile is uh, you know rare you can say uh, i feel so maybe i am wrong Now, what does this mean what does this mean for you one is you know we are trying to get happiness from the right feeling from the other person yeah that is one thing yeah because our feeling uh, itself is not ensured we are trying to get this happiness from the right feeling from the other person that is one thing the other thing is i have a strong perhaps a strong sanskar for this you know like i will haggle somewhere yeah. i have given lot of importance to money perhaps yeah. No? yeah so those sanskars i must look at because in this case it is leading to happiness for you temporarily because you are getting this right feeling from the other person Mm-hmm. any other person any uh, other moment it could be that the other person starts shouting and getting angry with you ke why you are haggling for this much something like that no no actually uh, all of them they know me because i take rickshaw daily and uh, somehow and why do you need to haggle then he knows now already he knows that you are going to give yeah. that much oh my <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> checking and see we do these small small things without really looking at what is behind that yeah, without thinking about it yeah ah see many times this kind of sanskar no that giving importance to physical facility then mm-hmm. if you look at that sanskar you will find there is another sanskar behind that yeah you ask yourself why you are giving so much importance to physical facility so like this we can sort of trace out our sanskars which are driving our feelings but we are not even aware no? yeah yeah exactly yeah so we have to be more aware we have to keep checking what we are doing and why we are doing see the behavior is one part but with that behavior what was my feeling inside and what drove that feeling no mm-hmm. right so when we try to trace all this back then we f- we find that there are many sanskars hidden in us that we are not just not aware of 
some of these sanskars may be in line with natural uh, acceptance some of these sanskars may not be in line with natural acceptance yeah no so like to be said, you have this you may have one sanskar for you know giving importance to physical facility at the same time it's what we call a good sanskar of you know seeing your relationship with the other and sort of you know being able to see that you know he must get his due mm mm-hmm. and so you do give that right amount at the end of it but there you know your interest is in the smile he gives so that's why for every person if you ask yourself why with that reason you will be able to make out you know why you are doing may be different for why somebody else is doing something no mm-hmm. right so you will be able to trace out your sanskars then you can see you know as we go further in the steps this is what we are doing we are trying to see what kind of preconditionings what kind of assumptions sanskars are leading to this and then checking if they are in line with our natural acceptance or not in line then whatever is in line we can keep that what is not in line we can slowly get rid of that in right because ultimately whether it will lead to happiness or not we are not clear until and unless it is in line with natural acceptance mm-hmm. right right to ma'am thank you ji ji namaste 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 good morning to all very nice discussion and internalized internalization because yes. right from the morning we have developed a thought process of that nature when we talk to uh, uh, milkman or sabji seller vegetable seller and like that we try to bargain and i don't know how much we are able to save and naturally we are prosperous and he is also he has come out for making his days earning live life for live livelihood plus something because but uh, at times it so happens we bargain for things and we are very happy as if we have uh, we have one something so we have to be very careful and i try that without bargain if it happens so it gives pleasure not only to him but to me also that is one part and uh, uh, as for uh, while we are taking vegetables in a, right at our gate we are utilizing plastic polythin and uh, at least i with me i uh, take care of myself and i carry a bag with me and i try to avoid buying bringing the material in polythin cases yeah and, nice namaste thank you very much didi namaste thank you put an assignment uh, in the group what we did the observation about we'll put that assignment because this we already did this 